what should a woman do if she has like an emotionally unavailable partner? Usually that happens to a woman and she feels that way when she is emotionally unavailable. So how to become emotionally more available is when you're upset about things to process your feelings. In all my books, I put this process in there. It's central Mars, Venus, emotional intelligence. And it's, if you're upset about something to give yourself permission to blame. Now, all negative emotions are blame in some form or another. Okay, that's why we want to take blame out of our lives. The more I realize that no, there's no one to blame for my life except me, the less negative emotions I have. However, we're not perfect people. We have this 80, 90% of our brain is very primitive. And when there's disappointment, blame is automatic. Okay, when there's injustice, blame, and there is injustice, you know. <laughs> Every day I look at the news, I see such complete lies, such injustice, such abuse of people's naive knowledge. Uh, but I can't be upset about it. I just have to go, this is human nature. This is the way it is. And, it, you know, my life is wonderful. You know, I wish I could share that with everybody. I do my best. So, but the point is I have an attitude. So my, my lower brain rarely controls my higher brain. But for most people, you know, you're young, you're in, particularly when you're having sex and love is new and you haven't mastered everything, you have these reactivities. You get angry about stuff. You feel resentful about stuff. You feel hurt by things. Oh my gosh, this feeling of, of hurt is the most immature level of emotional intelligence that one can have. And unfortunately, it's like bow down to, if you go to therapy, oh, you're upset, you must be hurt. Oh, you must be hurt. Let's talk about your hurt feelings. The more you talk about your hurt feelings, the more infantile you become. You see, the only part of your brain that can feel hurt is the first seven years of your life before your prefrontal cortex even had any chance to develop. See, what, when we feel hurt, actually what we're feeling is we're feeling left out. You know, I'm being ignored, I'm being deprived, I'm not getting what I need. It's a child which is totally dependent on others. As adults, we're not so totally dependent on others. So hurt is not a rational emotion, but when we are excluded, we feel left out, we feel rejected, we do feel hurt because it triggers childhood feelings. These are not adult feelings. Disappointment would be an adult emotion. A child emotion is hurt. And, and, also, and, and also sadness as well, it's close to adult, but still not fully adult. But with most adults, it's okay to go through sadness as long as you can flow through it. But when you say you hurt me, you're just basically retraining your brain to be an infantile, overly sensitive instead of healthy sensitive, which is happy and joyful and loving and forgiving. And this is the abundance of love comes from your sensitivities, but we have to realize we all carry baggage from our childhood. So we don't want to indulge that baggage on our partner, but we want to heal that baggage by being able to reveal to ourselves these feelings and you're like the parent listening to the child or you go to a coach or a therapist, but don't throw that on your partner unless you're somewhat advanced. Now, someone advanced communication skill would look like this. You know, honey, when you didn't call me or you didn't, you, you uh, said that thing to me, it was a little scary. It was not a big deal. It kind of hurt a bit. It reminded me of when I was growing up and my father said this or in my marriage when my husband threw a big tantrum you know, these, these old feelings got triggered. So it's not about you, but it, it did come up and it does hurt. And, and, and I'll tell you what happened in my past. So you don't dwell at all on what they said or did that triggered feelings of hurt. So there's a big difference from you hurt me and you triggered feelings of hurt. It's the same. And this is a great example I'm about to give you, which is if you were my friend and you came along and, and gave me a pat on the shoulder, hey, John, hey, good to see you gave me a pat on the shoulder, right? That's a good thing. But what if under my shoulder, inside of me, I carry a wound there? It's gash, it's open and it's bleeding. That's my childhood and the subconscious mind is hidden, see? I didn't see it, you're not looking at it. And I come along and go, hey, John, you come along and go, hey, John, and you touch that button and that triggers that hurt. I go, ow, you hurt me. How could you do that? And, and particularly if I don't know I've got a button there, how are they supposed to know there's a button there? There's no way. And it doesn't make sense at all to our cognitive brain. And so men being more on their mask, if they're more on their masculine side, the masculine side of both men and women is logic. Mm -hmm. And logically that's irrational. 
So we will minimize it. And so men are always minimizing <laughs> women's emotions because your emotions always carry the weight of past emotions. That's just the way Freud explained it a long time ago. Everything which is suppressed in you from your childhood, because you could not process it as a child. You can't do that until you're almost an adult, unless your parents did it for you, but they don't know how to do this. So you've got all this unprocessed stuff. So when you have emotions in present time, 90% of any negative emotion you have is conditioned by previous accumulation of other feelings of hurt or anger or resentment or fear or insecurity or doubting. All that stuff inside of us is never about what is happening now. So if you put it on your partner as if, it's hap as if they just did that, it, it doesn't make sense at all. I just gave you a pat on the shoulder. I just said that one thing. Okay, I apologize. Apology too late. You can't apologize. <laughs> you know, I don't accept your apology. You have to grovel. You know, all these extreme things we do is because we don't realize how much our past controls us. And by, you know, doing good communication skills like what I just mentioned and many, many more, we can avoid all that. Mm, such a Such a good point and such a, deep explanation that I haven't heard before. Of course, you know, yeah. it comes from you. And I'll add another one to the emotionally unavailable man. This is where women, they got it turned around. They want to penetrate him. He's supposed to open up. <laughs> Don't want that. Don't want that. Get him to penetrate you. May, open it up. So that's one. And then the next stage of that unava unavailable man is the, so this is a question I hear all the time. Where, how do I get my husband to be more romantic? Okay, where's the romantic men? Where are those romantic men? How can I find a romantic men? I say, bottom line, it's all in your mind. It's the, it's the color of your glasses. Uh, if, if you have the right glasses on, meaning the shade, you have pink color glass, let's say, he empties the trash, that's romantic. He gives you a hug, that's romantic. You say to him, honey, do you love me? He says, I always love you. That's romantic, but you said, honey, do you love me? Most women won't do that. You should just say it. You know, most women, <laughs> he empties the trash. She goes, well, he should empty the trash. I made him dinner. You know, it's like the little things men do are romantic if women are feeling good. But when women are not feeling good, nothing he does is ever gonna be romantic enough. And, you know, certainly, uh, special occasions are romantic, but every day can be romantic depending upon the rose colored glasses you have or the dark glasses you wear. <laughs> and this is biologically true. Biologically, when your estrogen levels are at normal level, okay, this you're happy, normal happy level, you're not stressed out, having a good time, they're about 10 times higher than a man's. Okay, that's your normal level. If they're at that normal level and he does something for you, then that will be romantic. If your estrogen levels are below, he does the same thing. He goes and he empties the trash. He gives you a hug. He gives you a call at work, anything. If, if, if your estrogen is at a healthy level, it's romantic. If your estrogen is higher than normal, it's more romantic. If it's lower than normal, no matter what he does, it's not romantic. You'll find something wrong with it. So let's look at the, the studies on this. If a, woman's est if a woman's estrogen is 10 times higher than a man's, we know it is because other research shows that when her stress levels are low, cortisol production is normal, her estrogen will be normal. Now at those times, if a man does something nice for a woman, it'd be like, I give you 50 roses, that's romantic, right? And you'll get a spike in estrogen. But I can also give you one rose and you'll get the same spike in estrogen. That's why in the beginning of relationships, when you have so much anticipation that everything you're going to get what you need, your estrogen's very high. So he just does little things. He called me. That's romantic. You know, he, we waited in line and talked. That's romantic. See, it's all about your hormones that make his actions romantic. Now, certainly his actions can be non-romantic. That's what we want to avoid, where men say mean things or men ignore you or men put you down or men minimize you or men don't listen to you. You know, men are lazy. They rather watch TV all the time instead of some of the time. You know, there's a balance to everything. But the bottom line is you can make a man romantic, ask for what you want and get it and do a lot to keep your estrogen up. So when he does one little thing for you, like, honey, would you give me a hug? That's, a, that's romantic. But see, in women's mind, if I have to ask for it, then it's not romantic. Now, that's in your mind. That's some childhood fairy tale. 
And truly, if, if your estrogen levels were at a healthy level, you could ask and you get, and it would be romantic. But when the estrogen levels are low, your mind is gonna say, yeah, but I had to ask, he didn't do it on his own. Do you see the game we play with ourselves? And the bottom line of it, it really is, a lot of it's just hormonal. If you're feeling good, everything's romance. And I wanna thank Lauren, my daughter who teaches this stuff. She came up with this when we're, she does these women only courses on, on, at our website, marsvenus.com. And so daddy, I'm, I sit with her every Friday for six hours, you know, and I edit and talk with her and so forth as she writes these things, they're amazing. She's better than me, but she still needs, she feels she needs more insight from me. So I'm there giving a little edit here or there. And the validation, because I have a lot more experience, but she has brilliance, okay. So she was talking about how to get men out of the cave. Men could pull away, how to get them out of the cave. And so you do this and this and this women, he'll come out of the cave and be romantic again. And I said, really, he'll be romantic again? She goes, oh yeah. And I said, well, what does Glade do? That's her partner. What does Glade do that's romantic? Oh, when he comes out of the cave, he'll just go and empty the trash. And I say, that's romantic? And she said, of course. <laughs> it was just so clear because her hormones are completely invalid. She's happy most of the time. And you know what she does if she's not happy? Uh, now I have the technique is when you're not happy to journal in your, in your journal and express whatever you're feeling and then come back to positive feelings. And, and she, she, she's taken it to another level because she has so much support in her life, estrogen. She'll, uh, she catches it in the butt. As soon as she starts to feel anything unhappy, she says to her partner, I need to do a round. And a round means I'm gonna go and do kind of a, med a meditative experience to completely let go of any negativity and imagine having the perfect response. Remembering a time recently when I was really happy, 10 minutes generating happiness inside of her. And then 10 minutes imagining in the future with her partner feeling very, very happy. You see, think about that for a moment. And she's a master of that. It's amazing. She can do that. The, uh, what we do all the time, 24 hours a day is imagine the worst. We're constantly, and that just retrains the brain to look for the worst. This is now brain science. <laughs> it's literally, when you look at the, what's wrong, you're growing neural connectors to the right prefrontal cortex of your brain, which will then continue looking, oh, what else is wrong? What else is wrong? And by not indulging that, it's still good to have, see what's wrong, but you, you don't wanna do that more than you're seeing what's positive. <laughs> so she just goes and works She's got so much connective tissue over to her left brain, left prefrontal cortex, which only sees positivity. It sees what's good, it sees opportunity, and it loves yourself. And you look in the mirror and you love yourself. You know, you, you've heard some of my YouTube talks. I do like three or four hours at a time. I listen to every one of them. I'm my biggest fan. <laughs> I love myself so much. It's quite amazing. I, you know, a lot of people don't want to see their thing, whatever. I'm just fascinated by what I say, you know, because it's just, it's me, you know, I love me. It took a long time to get there and we can all get there. If we practice, you've got to rewire the brain to where that potential is realized and it's practice, practice, practice. So my suggestion for women is don't indulge in talking about negative things unless you're doing it privately or in a therapeutic context where you're getting in touch with your negative emotions to let them go. I realize why focusing on positivity wasn't such a big part of my, my process. Uh, and that's because I was a, a monk for nine years and never experienced negativity at all. I, anytime, anytime I had a negative thought, I would just go into deep meditation. So I can always go to deep meditation, which is for a man, it's the cave. You go to the cave, you forget your problems. But for women, they need to feel it either negative or positive, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is feel your emotions. And the amazing thing, and science tells us this biologically and psychology teaches us this, is that what you think generates your emotions and you can choose what you think. You just, I'm thinking negative thoughts, shift to thinking positive thoughts and generating positive feelings. Now this is different from pretending. This is literally practicing. That's all it is, is practicing. And then you get in the habit of thinking positive. It takes, you know, well, ultimately it takes a lifetime. 
but you, you get dramatic results in 60 days by doing this.